Hey guys, this is Big Master. Welcome back to another Tops episode. Bravely second, man. Now, even without going to the end of the year yet, this is still among my top three favorite games of 2016. And I don't even know where in the top three, but since you know, since something hasn't been out yet, but it, it's still up there. That's how much I really love Bravely Second. So, naturally, with a game I really like, there will have to be a favorite character's tops. So, here we are. The Bravely Second character's tops. So, uh, the Bravely Second character's tops will also supposed to include Brady Default. However, basically everyone who's on Brady Default is on Brady Second. The only exceptions are on characters with classes that only are on Brady Default. Not like it'll matter, except for that one, what's his name, Victor, I believe, that um, has like a sec like a secondary healing class, so, so to say. I mean, he looks interesting, but other than that, no. But um, pretty much everyone else is, is in Brady's second to some extent, so um, even though this will include Brady's Brady default, Brady's second character's tops. Okay, so let's get this going right, right off the bat. Ten Kami Zumi. So this is Edia's master, the guy that uh, the main character Edia actually respects. Is you know he taught her everything he he knows. Uh, he he's basically the samurai of the game. Um, with you know, uh, I guess you say like, what something would you expect a like a really well respected um, samurai kind of guy would say? And I don't mean like kind of samurai that will just you know. Just work for whoever they work uh, or work for, and just hit things brutally. No, no, he's like kind of a well-respected kind of guy, and that's kind of his mannerisms. That's something I like about him, because uh, he's not the kind of guy you want to go on your bad side, because he's just so likable, so to say. Um, but yeah, and while I don't respect him as much as let's say Phoenix Wright, but um, I do. If I find him very respectable, so I'll, I'll give, give him that. Um, also, the fact that Brady's second, he um, if it, he keeps a cat, and um, he becomes a huge like cat nerd, so to say. And his cat actually ends up serving part of the story to some extent, and it's really hilarious. I, I really do like that. It's, it's awesome. So, uh, yeah, Kamizumi, um, well-respected kind of guy. Nine, I really do love like Amy and Angelo's personalities together because individually neither like both of them are not good. However, it's really their relationship with each other that makes this ninth spot. Because uh, let's start with Angelo because he's dri big driving force in that he is um, Patissier non pare. I think that's how you pronounce it. So the the Patissier class, aka the cook class. So, um, also known as debuff class, for for, the, for those who are into, like, more traditional JRPG things. He's, he's a debuff classer. So, um, what he, do, what he does, his job class does, is, um, he makes pastries and then uses it to make debuffs for the enemy. Um, but his personality, though, um, he comes across as, um, not, not a lazy man, so to say, but he's, like, the kind of, the kind of guy who... Um, kind of superstar chef, so to say, that girls are all into, um, his pastries, and of course himself, so, um, and he makes cakes literally, as the game says that to die for. So, he, he's, he's kind of a celebrity chef, so to say, uh, who acts all humble, but he's really not. Um, yeah, and he, he's kind of like, more subtly evil. Enter Amy, who's also a uh, not evil, so to say. She just really wants to shoot things and wants to do things for her little darling. So, um, like with a lot, of, a lot of like Angelo's, I guess, fangirl, so to say. Amy's one of them as well. And um, she, I guess, it's her, let's say her relationship with him is like very amazing. Uh, not amazing. It's like very adorable. Um. And 
At first, Angela is like, yeah, look at this Amy. She's a, just another girl that is enamored with 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 what I with my looks and enamored with my cakes, but not exactly anything else. But eventually, he warms up to Amy, and it just like it makes it really, I guess, adorable. It makes it makes you we want to cheer for them for whatever, um, I guess, cooking shop they want. Um, they'll open up. And I know there are a lot of controversies with Amy with the she's been like heavily localized um, with the Japanese version her being uh, more themed of Native Americans heck her I heard her job her job class action is called shamanism so you would think that how do cowboys and shamans they don't they don't work well together but it's something you would expect of a Native American themed uh, character so they turn to make her like a cowboy but to me, it doesn't make that much of a difference since the personal the personality is still work still works regardless of what she looks like, regardless of you know what she sounds like or anything. So I really don't take that much into account since it a it works for her. So I don't see anything wrong with it as long as the the writing of it still is top notch, and I think it I think it's top notch. Hey, speaking of well-written relationships, here is Revenant the Guardian. Now, um, Revenant, you I think, okay, so what is he? Now, I'm going to say right now, I know most of you probably not aware of this, but there's an anime called Full Metal Alchemist. I think I had mentioned this like, uh, more than once on the channel. He's Alphonse. So, who, what okay, is Alphonse? So, essentially, he is a kid basically trapped in a suit of armor. Now, uh, um, so, and no, there's no one inside the suit of armor. The kid's, like, it, the armor is possessed by the kid. Um, I believe, if you remember, right, the reason for it is because his dad, um, uh, actually, he, I guess he does the whole possession thing since he still sees sort of, like, what, an exorcist or something? He, he's, like, um, kind of an important, like, science or healing kind of guy. Um. Uh, However, things well, he'll want to save his boy, so he has to no choice but to put him in a suit of armor. And oh boy, let me talk about his dad a bit, since yeesh. So, I don't want to forget his name, but he um, he's kind of like very creepy. He's like he's like very creepy. He's um uh he does he deals with a lot of blood. He you can even tell in the suit. Um, but his shtick is that he can undo stuff. No, not go back in time and stuff. Well, sort of like go back in time. However, he can undo an action. So it means like, let's say, um, he gets shot or something. You can just undo that. So you can undo so you can get unshot. So, um... His like the way he, the way he fights is kind of strange as well, and I don't really use his class that much, so it's it's really weird. But I do use the Guardian class a lot, so. Mm. But um, the reason why I put Revenant and not his not his dad along with him is because I think he does it. He does the the biggest part of the relationship because like you eventually will kill you will kill his dad, and once you reach the main villain's lair, he shows up, possesses um, possesses one of your party members. And then he pulls out the Nigo Montoya line, and he just goes at it, and he is definitely really loves his dad, like, more than anything. Um, and he just gets angry at you for killing him. So, and eventually part of the story where you have to, oh, great, I can't say, I can't up saying this. You have to uh, essentially redo, redo the world, so to say. And yes, that's part of the game. Um, you see, you see Revan and his dad together, and then they have a share a really great moment together, which definitely has, has the whole feels to it. Like, a relation, like, you, you would think a relation between a kid in the suit of armor and this really bloody dude, like, go well together, but they do. It's adorbs. And I'll, I'll give him that. I'll definitely give the little suit of armor kid that. Also, I do you I do sometimes use his, um, job class, the Guardian, and I find it really helpful. So although not all the time, but I find it really cool, especially for Tiz, where I made a tank of the game. <laughs> Seven.
seven alternates, and once again we deal into relationships. Actually, it's kind of almost the, the entirety of this list because, well, I'm gonna tell you right now since we're, we're going to alternates, so I have to mention this. Brandy's second in general deals with relationships. That's kind of not really not, not really romantic relationships because, as you see with Revenant, he's more of a, as of a the paternal thing, but um, in general, so to say. So it's kind of originally between characters. So that's pretty much what Brady Second seems to be all about. Now, enter enter Alternus, which is, uh, I guess, he's EDS, EDS crush, so to say. Um, so I guess Alternus is probably the love interest of, of EDS, or the other way around, so to say, more, more not. And um, he will defend EDS when, when, however he needs. It's like, um, if he didn't need something, he was all, he's probably already there doing the thing, doing that thing he, uh, she wants. That's how that's how much like dedication this dude has. Even when it's like something weird, it's like not weird. Something like you would expect him to just show up to do already. Like, like for example, his first appearance in Ready Second, he's just like already there doing exactly the thing he wants, um, will really wants to do. So that this, this dude has a lot of dedication. I'll tell you that. Um, you know, nothing weird is getting his job class is kind of a weird thing. It doesn't make any sense, but um, I guess it fits his character. But that's not the point. The point is that Altonus, he is he is like a dedicated lover. He is like he is a really dedicated lover. Even though E D the entire person the entire game is is all questioning things. Cause well, let's just say there's a certain character in Brave Default, one of the main characters, that uh, she has more of a crush on than Altonus. Now granted, I could just say the name of that character since it's been obvious in in, in Brady Default. But let's just say he's a spoiler for Brady Second, so I can't really say that. So if you know Brady Default, go ahead, you already know this character, but if you don't know Brady Default, I can't tell you the name of it, because it's actually it's kind of a big spoiler because they does show up in the game. Uh, and the relationship between those two characters is interesting. I'll leave it at that. So here we go, Altonus, he is a very dedicated dude. That's it. Six Mephilia, she's on my Retops, uh, Retops waifu list, so I think that's enough for me to say. However, the, the reason why she is in here specifically not just because he's on the waifu list, but because, like, her personality has changed quite a bit between default and, and second. Where she doesn't show up that much in the game, so she's only really there for her specific class uh, st uh, side story, in which um, there's this dude... Who was from? Was from the like? I forgot his name. The the Al Campus Academy, and uh, he wants to. Well, he's a nerd, so he wants to work his nerdy stuff. Um, however, he's placed in a job, more of a uh, manual working job, so and he really doesn't like it. So Mephilia, she essentially quote unquote kidnaps him, so he can uh, so um, he can help her some um, do a very. I guess specific like really rare summoning magic since you know since Philly's a summoner so and this dude knows a lot about summoning so she helps him like uh, achieve his dream of being a great summoner to summon I think it was called Amaterasu um, who is like a really big deal summon however uh, enter Kamizumi who I, I, I mentioned earlier respectable dude he because um he's already, he's already on a job why are you quitting? Why are you quitting the job that was placed for you? Even though you may not like it, we still have to in like um, in I guess endure it, and um, do your job and it makes it like um, I, f I forgot the exact words, but essentially tell him not to do it, not not to quit his job, just 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 for for a dream that may or may not happen. So basically, it's do you want to chase your the truth? In which it's better off to leave your job just in case, or go to your ideals where you want to deal with your um, your, your expertise in summoning. Oh, hey, black and white. Um, that's Ophelia, and, and she's not, and in Brave Default, Ophelia's kind of a psycho, so to say. However, in Brave Default, she's toned down quite a lot to be more, um, reasonable, so to say. And that's what we really, really love about Ophelia, because, like, not only is she waifu material, but she's also, like, um, I guess adorable. So let's say her, like, her, her, the way she, the way she, her, the way her lines work are, 
kind of adorable. So she has really better writing, if you ask me. All right, that's enough for her. Moving on. Number five, him. I think that's you. So I mentioned how I really do like this dude, and I really do like like one of the sibling. That doesn't mean he's my favorite character. So there you go. I'm just saying that there are four characters that I like more than the, than the one guy I would really want as a son. And I mean like one guy wants a son, I mean the one guy I really want as a son, as a character. Because everyone else in that child is a female. Uh, except for like, I don't remember. Like one or two. But um, oh yeah, except for Luigi, right. And um, so you, again, I'm going to go well, reference that tops again. Is that he, every time I play Brady Second, the more I like this character. Since um, he gets more and more enjoyable throughout the game. Since like, at first my favorite character uh, and very second is another, it's another character on this list, so I can't say his name yet. But um, when the game game really is really shifts to him, since it's kind of a it's his game, and I thought to myself, oh great, what am I gonna do with this guy? Might as well make him the major in group since I Tiz has always been my the tank, and uh, Edia in Brave Default has always been my I guess my ninja, but the one that hits so many times. Let's bicker that. And so, what do you do? You make it with the mage. Uh, but, uh, yeah, in personality wise, he's like very enjoyable. Especially after like the middle of the game. When you wish the middle of the game, that's where he, that's where he shines the most. So, from then on, uh, he, he shows his resolve. He knows what, exactly what he what wants to do, how he's going to do it, how he's going to save the world. And, you know, defeat Kairos of Oblivion, the, the main villain. And once that, once that point is reached, he becomes a lot more enjoyable, so I really do uh, like use personality a lot. Even though it started out kind of meh, but it went from meh to awesome, so I'll give him that. For the cutest thing in the game, Annette. So she is freaking adorable. It's like, um,. I guess she's definitely my favorite female character in this game. So yeah, everyone after that is male. So yeah, I don't have another female character in my number one slot. So uh, she's she's adorbs. She's straight adorbs. Like all of her cat themed puns. I think that one conversation with Kaizo Oblivion, which I'll get to soon. But um, yeah, I guess I'll say man's very adorbs. Um, her job class, the Cat Master, is the Blue Mage, and you know how much I love Blue Mages. And I made him part. I made the blue mage part of Tiz's character alongside the tank. So not only made him the tank, but also made him the powerhouse. Since apparently the cat master, unlike every single blue I've ever seen, is an attack focused job more than anything. Because he, he has um bonuses as a more bonus in attack than every other class. Um, focus on axes as as his main weapon of choice. And axes on on, the, on themselves are a pretty strong weapon at the cost of some accuracy. But of course that could be. Mitigated by the by the means, but geez, this is the most attack-oriented blue mage I've ever seen, and it the char the character that holds this job is a little, little cat girl, and she's not really not cat girl, so to say, she not not like what you expect of an anime fan cat girl, where she just like has like cat ears that actually are cat ears. No, her costume she has like a cat themed costume with like the tiara looking like like cat ears, but um she's straight adorbs. I really do love Minette. Um, I really want to hug the girl. I just want to hug this girl considering her tragic backstory, which I already mentioned in the previous tops. So go watch that. Uh, I'll just leave it at that. She's like, she's straight adorbs, and I really love her. Three! Denny Genealogia! So let's go, um, talk about him. This is, um, Yu's brother. So, uh,. And he's kind of been like kind of long lost for the majority of the game. And when um, near the beginning of the game, uh, when you find this kind of sort of like weird legendary sword that's actually cursed, he remembers the time why he should not do this. Like why? Like because he knows that um, this sword is a thing in an area where he's in it now, and he tells someone. I think it was the yokai that um, do not touch that sword. And Everyone was surprised, like, why you of all people saying that? So, once you reach there, you tell the story of his brother, who actually did touch the sword, um, 
so that um, he'll become strong enough uh, for something regarding his family. I don't remember exactly. Oh yeah, because like his dad like shuns him or something, and uh, or something, and uh, then he wants to actually get stronger. So he touched touch the sword, granted his wish, at the cost of his arm. So basically, he gets a powerful sword at the loss of his sword arm. You should imagine a Wayne with touching that sword. That would be, be painful. Um, so yeah, he loses the sword, and he, and he's kind of like ticked after that. So. Um, for the rest, uh, rest of what we know about him, he eventually makes a vow to actually, um, essentially wants to gain his sword arm back. Not only wants to get his sword arm back, he wants to get his respect back. So what does he do? What he does is turn into the main villain of the game, Kaiser Oblivion. The main villain is actually the main character's brother. And he's awesome. <laughs> I was heard that. It's kind of strange for me to say that. That the most evil things happening is probably one of my favorite characters. I don't usually have villains that are among my favorite characters. But he's a good exception. Now, um, okay. So now I'm going to finally talk about that scene. Now, the scene we're talking about with Minette. On why, on, on his conversation with Minette. Long story short. <laughs> oh my goodness. Kai's Oblivion actually does treat uh, Minette like he wore a, like like his own cat, and like oh, it's like who's a cute little kitty? He's a cute little kitty. You are, like in, in a kind of not not what you'd expect of a main bad guy kind of like straight up adorbs. That is probably the one of my most memorable like lines that he's ever said. That he tr that he treats Minette like I would treat Minette. <laughs> Especially like a like, like like a cute little uh, kitty daughter thing, and I mean that respects him for that, and so do I. I respect Kaiser Oblivion for making for making Minette happy. So good on you, dude. Also, how their job class is freaking amazing. Uh, his job class is amazing because it's it's an end game job. So because it's an end game job, you do get a lot of really good end game bonuses for it. Um, because it's actually one of the, probably one of the strongest jobs in the game, especially on the physical side. It's one of the strongest jobs, uh, and you do get access to a lot of insane stuff with it. Uh, granted, I don't really use it for the final battle since I already have my own set rule, uh, set set classes for everyone. But geez, the Kaiser job is amazing. Uh, so that's that. That's the that's the story of the Jenny Elja family. The story of the main villain. Why I think he's actually pretty dang cool. Um, also, doesn't help that he has a freaking fairy on his side. Freaking fairies! Sorry, I just don't like the fairies in this game. They're evil. So, uh, this one's a two. Two Nikolai. Okay, so this is probably the main one. Of the, not like the main thing why I bought this game. I was gonna say that, but. Out of the, the the demo of Brady's second, he was easily my favorite character. Easily my favorite character, um, and I really want I really wa wanted to play as Nikolai in the full game, but it turns out that you only play as him for the beginning of the game. Before spoilers, here we go. Spoilers for Brady's second. Even though it's kind of early in the game, so not really matters that much. It turns out he's actually working for the bad guys. Him and Jan are both working for the bad guys, but his reason for it is really because Nikolai has experienced quite a lot of bloodshed within the Crystal Guard and a lot of um, not very cool things for basically knights to do. So, essentially, as a holy knight, so to say, the best way to describe it, he wants to repent for his sins and wants to go... Uh, I guess back in time to undo all of the all the nonsense that happened with the Crystal Guard. So to make himself a clean slate, so to say. Which is respectable, I guess. And and he's still at he, at no point during the game that he acts evil. Like Gian, for example, he's always been like the rival, especially the Gary Oak to 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 use uh Ash or Red or whatever. He's always been the Gary or the Blue. 
And um, Nikolai's always been like this this guy who basically treats um, you like his own son. And he definitely shows. Since Nikolai's actually, again, very respectable dude. And um, again, at no point during the game does he show any any evilness in him. And there's a, there's a point in the game where you have to kill him. And I just don't want to. Like, the, there's a point in the game where I have to fight against someone and I have to kill him. But I don't want to. Like, I don't want to kill this guy. But I have to because part of the game. If this guy makes me do that, then he definitely deserves to be within the top three of, uh, of any fair characters list. So, kudos for you, Nikolai. You make me feel bad for killing you. That is part of the best thing I'm gonna say about this guy. Moving on to one. And number one, Tiz. Now, why is Tiz the top spot? Well, because he's always been top spot. Ever since, like, Brady Default, he has been top spot. For me, the game revolves around him, like, both. This game's sort of ready second, the game seems to revolve around his to some extent. But for the first, he's the main character as his freaking town, his little, little village thing just got destroyed by this by an immense, like, empty, like, not black hole, so to say, but like an endless hole that's kind of got like portal to them and, like, what everything evil there is on the world that has tra tra that's, um, transpired through the two games. So basically, his home to get destroyed, but the source of all evil, essentially. Uh, so what does he do? He goes to the next town and has like, um, and since everyone next in the town, uh, little town next to it, next to his little village, respects Tiz. Like he's a uh, Eric oh, he's a pretty good good guy and everything. So he's already well respected within like a bit far into uh, his hometown. Uh, even someone who has the king of that area really respecting Tiz. Uh, so again, it's the respect right there. Of course, he meets up with Anyez and starts a little adventure, meets the other two characters, and he does, does a little story then. And then goes into Brady's second where he gets gets um gets stuck into this little chamber things and Magnolia has, has uh, eventually like rescues him. And then somehow the first thing he does after he gets out is notice that he has like oddly spiky hair when it shouldn't be there and what he does it's kind of amazing the, like the first little really action he does in the game is you, the, the long story short there's a mechanic that allows you to not have random encounters at all so how does so how does um the party get um ability to not get random encounters he does the jedi mind trick so it is shown in story that tis has his power to make enemies not fight them. What? <laughs> he could just like, hey, hey guys, this is two, two guys there. He does a little Jedi mind trick, says that the there um there's no one to fight around here or something like that, or you don't want to fight us. And then the guy, and then the soldiers there is like, well, we don't want to fight you, and then just leave. And not only is that specific part kind of relevant to. A story reason why a certain mechanic is in the game, but it gets brought up again, like at the end of the game. So at the end of the game, to get the final class, well, yeah, to get touch the final class of the game, the yokai, um, the character with the class actually shuts off Tiz's ability to do that. So therefore, you cannot um, adjust your counter rate. So it gets this is really hilarious, like. Uh, ability that is shown in story and has like, I guess not repercussions, but it has like references to other part of the story. Now, also his personality. Look like his personality. It's it's very standard. It's like very standard. I just lost my home village kind of guy. But he doesn't really stray much from it, and I think that's kind of a good thing. Uh, since like he's always shown to be this not heroic type, but he just like, hey, I'm just I'm just a village guy. Like I, I'm not a, a big hero at all. And even um, in Brady's second where he has where he has been revered as a hero by Tiz and Tiz not Tiz by you and you is a huge fanboy of Tiz. And I mean huge fanboy of Tiz. That 
he calls him sir and everything, and Tiz is like, why are you calling me this? I'm, I'm just, a, I'm just a, I'm just a guy. Um, so the, be the, the biggest sticking point to Tiz is, is humility, and I think that um, it's something that is, is a good thing to have for for anyone, regardless of who they are. Like humility is definitely a great trait to have. Cause you don't want to be bragging around, like bragging about about who you are, like just like just be this pompous person who is saying, "Oh, I'm the best at everything." Like, go insert type of political statement here. Um, but Tiz is very humble. He's a great guy to to hang around, even by even by his little his number one fanboy, and I, I just to say that I can't really say much. It just He's a great guy, and I really like Tiz. Okay, so that's it. Half an hour mark. Let's leave it at that. See you guys later for Toss 116, which is planned to be the locations that like to be a Pokemon region. See you guys later.